Hi, sir. Hi, Jackson. like all other nations, a, a, a proper European country, like they want to be, we must say that we are architecturally like the rest of Europe. And they took this very heavy socialist, by our Republic liberal style architecture, and they brought it here. There's one difference between what are called great Bauhaus and European Bauhaus, and that is an allowed balconies because of the sun. Uh, as a source of fuel and coal being available from countries that have a, uh, a stable, long-term relationship with Israel, South Africa is our main source of coal and still is, I think. Uh, also, also Australia, uh, Poland, we get coal from. Oil is still the, the supplier of most of our fuel. And oil we now get from, uh, from Egypt we get a lot, from Venezuela and the rest we buy here or there wherever the price is good. So those are our two major rock. Can you see that? This is an ancient stone quarry. Okay, now, we want you to photograph that in your minds because 
I don't have a mind it's going left. to Oops. be um, significant of all places when we go to Yad Vashem, to the Valley of the Communities. Now, I know what I've said is completely incomprehensible, and I'm not going to tell you. So there, what I mean. But I want you to think about this and remember this, because the architect of that had uh, That's not fair if you quite put it on this tape. in mind when he did it. So we'll talk well, about you'll be able to remember Look over better. here uh, at, Mount, no, at I the don't mountain that. range that you see on your right. Uh, when we go to uh, it's right. There's a bunch of mountains over it's there. Like a hill. OK. Is that all right? Because the sun's not very bright, luckily. So that whole range of mountains. Is that all right, Miriam? There's a uh, What? It's better than it used to be, and yeah. it's even better than it used to be in the 19th century. They used to, there used to be um, signs in the late 19th century and all the trains that said, please do not descend from train to pick flowers while train is in motion. Oh, dear. Yeah. We've gotten better than that, but not. Oh, like the banana. Somebody in Israel is, you um, take the train, the train that goes from Haifa to Tel Aviv, and you, you take someone and you tie them to the train tracks, and you let them start to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the poor trains. Yes. So they are the butt of many jokes. <laughs> this is true. OK. Uh, and then if you also you want to use the train also, but seriously now, you want to use the train. If you live in Tel Aviv and it snows in Jerusalem and you want to see the snow, which it almost never, obviously, every once every 50 years it snows in Tel Aviv. So you take the train to Jerusalem to see the snow because they close the roads because they become very slippery. So that's a, that's one, at least one good reason to use the train. More homes. There is a little hospital and a sick bay and a clinic. And from here on, you can see there, there it says, Beit Martin Luther King, to your right, you could see soon.
everybody on the issue, really not everybody, but that's supposedly the criteria. We're going to sit with 10 families on the issue. We're going to each tell each other about these people, and then we're going to vote. This is what you call elitism. We're going to vote whether we want them to be here or not. I have a big problem with it. The other side is, without doing this, we, we don't have a means of continuing on this process. What does a person have to do if he wants to be up here? He has to have enough money to really build a house, so he's not going to stay in one of these caravans forever. That's the first criteria. I'd like to say it was different than the first criteria is that he was a liberal Jew, but it's not. Second criteria is he has to, he doesn't have to commit to coming to services once or all the time or ever. What he has to do is he has to commit to being open to the idea of liberal Judaism. That's what he has to commit to. That's like the minimal of minimal. And then it goes by feeling. If we feel good about the person, we accept them. And we have a whole range of people. We have people who here who think that they're orthodox, and I say that a little cynically. Um, we have several people who are really more conservative type Jews, and we have a lot of reformed Jews, and we have a lot of people who are still secular, but they come to services, but they consider themselves secular. Um, that's what we have. And we have a couple of we have a couple of people who are anti, a couple, like three maybe. And that came from a process of us being good reformed Jews and open to everything. And we accepted people who really weren't open. And it's a problem. It's unfortunate and it's a problem and it's making a lot of tension for us. So on one hand, our whole issue is built on these ide ideological um, foundations. Like one of the important things to us is coexistence. And we're running this camp by hook of a book that's really a model of its kind with our true neighbors. On the other hand, we choose who's going to live in our synagogue, in our area. It's a hard, uh, it's a hard thing to swallow, especially in 15 minutes. <laughs> well, how do people make their money? Every, almost everybody goes off the issue, except for that group that you saw there. That's not true. Let's start again. People either work on the issue with their own business that they run, which people have found is very possible. I threw one of the things out to you is that there's somebody here who's in public relations, and she decides she's going to have her office here, and I would say she'll never make it. She's been very good as a nurse. And um, people do everything. People really do everything. Um, and most of the people work in one of the neighboring cities. And more and more people are trying to move close to Carmel because you get this bug once you really come up here. And you have time to really take in the area. You don't want to leave. You just stay and you want to stay. So people are trying to move their offices or their work as close to possible. It's not on to the heart. What's the age range right of the adults? Um, we, uh, we have about 90% of the families are young families with young children. About 10% of people of all ages. It's all made up of issue being, we're the only issue that accepted people of all ages. This is very interesting. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's very interesting. It's uh, problematic. We have these issues constantly that we bring up and we fight about. I'll give you an example of an issue that we just had a big fight about. We had a fight about whether we would accept um, gay couples here at the issue. And uh, I'll tell you, I'm going to tell you honestly because and it, this doesn't reflect any one person's uh, opinion. What we came up with as an as issue, after fighting and fighting and fighting and, uh, and having discussions after the fights and then having a vote after all of the discussions is that we as a issue, on principle, accept gay couples and we're not accepting them at this day, but we're going to be looking forward after our first gal of Plita. What does that mean? After the first wave of new, new people settled here. We're, we're what we call a stigmatized issue here at Harfalutes. We're already what we, they call Dati. We're Dati, but we're Dati like you're Dati. We're religious like you're religious, but we are religious and we want it to be special. Being already with the stigma of being a religious issue has made our absorption process more slow than any other yeshuv in Israel. We're, we're a wonderful yeshuv, we've got incredible people, and yet we're growing slowly. On one hand, that's the way it is. On the other hand, it's frustrating because our kids are looking for, they want other kids their age, they feel isolated. We have kids, sometimes we have eight or ten kids in a, in a shikva, in a kita, sometimes we have one or two. And the kids feel isolated, and they want other kids their age, and, uh, and yet we're still growing slowly. We had uh, two really difficult situations. We had an older, uh, a young lady who's in now Kita Yud Aleph in the 11th grade, who left the Yishu, her family's here. She left and she went and she sat on the because she had nobody her age. It was a failure for us. It's a, it hurts. It's, it's a problematic thing. We didn't succeed in uh, absorbing kids fast enough. The 
answer is, what they decided to do was, I got the tough time, so I'm going to walk you out and finish answering questions on the way out. Um, that's how, that's the decision we've made. One, one's our ide ideology and the other is our reality. And um, hopefully, after this first uh, wave of Klita, we're going to become more aligned with our ideology than, than what we are at this moment. That's, uh, God, I really ended on a pessimistic note. I didn't mean to do that. Ask me a good question that I can tell you on your way out. The person was down to the old quarter. Approximately, I think it's right there where you see the green warning. At uh, 2.30. distracted in the synagogue by one little man yelling at one thing and another little man yelling something else. That, <laughs> that was such a mystical experience, I can't tell you. But I forgot to tell you something important mystical. that I did want to tell you. And I, with, with Kabbalah and with, with a, a types of Judaism that are unfamiliar to us, I like uh, Dafka, that's a word you got to be in Hebrew. it's hard to translate. I, I like mandate. This was the British mandate. They didn't like each other, so they had a border. They had customs houses and everything else. When they left the country during the War of Independence, all this low-lying land was in Israel's hands. We agreed to return it to what we considered to be the international border on the condition that the Arabs did. France, England, America recognized this as the border. Those are our fields. Those are our Kiwi fields over there. Those are wheat fields over here. We talk to people across the fence all day long. That's to keep us in the background. It's a little bit foggy today, hazy, but you can see the Golan back. Usually you can see the Hermon. It's very, very close. Uh, it looks every bit as nice as Mount Fuji, and until about a month ago, it had snow on the top. We had snow on there from about October until May, the end of May. The kibbutz was an empty hill like this hill over here. Everything that's been planted there was planted there since 1949. Uh, you saw as we went around the kibbutz, we care about our landscaping, our quality of life. That's as important to us as earning a living. 
you feel the breeze here. Today it's it's about as low as it usually gets. One of the things we're going to do here is we're putting up windmills to make electricity for the national grid. It may not even be cheaper than using fossil fuels, but we care about the quality of the environment, and therefore we're going to do it, and we're financing it by underwriters on the New York Board of Exchange. So if this is your concept of kibbutz, then, you know, that's the way it's going today. <laughs> Anybody have any questions about here? If not, let's get back on the bus. I want to go to the Army base, and I want to be back at the kibbutz by about... Sorry. into a place that we know that now they will they have to do something now we know that they they will try to do anything to, to hurt us and uh, if you heard yesterday uh, it's not yesterday two days ago a soldier was killed it's, it was uh, in a very planned ambush near uh, if you know uh, the area of the before it's uh, This base, the Syrians may sometime or another attack from this way, but today this base serves in order to stop that kind of attack. It's not the base that's against missile attacks or things like that. Throughout the armies across, all the armies had been. Three months to be ripe. Oh, and then it turns black. Must be black. 
Hell Dan Nature Reserve. I'm pushing the red. No. Oh, there, I got it. So I did get you, but I didn't hear yeah. anything running. Yeah. Hi, Jay. Hi, Rabbi. 
איזה יופי. איזה יופי. איזה יופי. איזה יופי. Yes, it is. It's a Fuji moment. Fuji moment? Not a Kodak? Kodak, Fuji. It's all film. Am I waiting? You can go. Really? You're doing a good job, Jay. Oh! <laughs>